When I saw this photo for the first time, well, my reaction was, yeah. I thought it was just another development in the Chinese drones and UCAP space. Something that happens way too fast and way too often. You just get desensitized after a while. The Chinese describe it as a high-performance, unmanned surveillance aircraft. Yes, interesting, but that's not something that we haven't seen already, so yeah, let's move on. However, something wasn't right. I had the sensation that I was missing something important to understand the Chinese strategy. And then, one day, I suddenly realized. I realized that if I was right, they just found a way to put everyone else in big trouble. WZ-8 was presented during a parade in 2019 and it made waves. In fact, it wasn't a mock-up, it was the real thing. The two units being shown were undoubtedly real vehicles. So it is an unmanned, pure delta-wing aircraft with a razor-thin leading edge. That's the most classic of the delta wings, and delta wings are one of the marvel of aerodynamics. It is very simple and streamlined, and it has quite a beautiful line. features two vertical surfaces at the wingtip. The horizontal control surfaces seem quite conventional with the two moving parts which are classic for the delta wing. And even the construction is nothing special because uh, it is a conventional metallic riveted structure. Propulsion is provided by two small liquid fuel rocket engines. They seem like two separate engines and not just one engine with two nozzles because there are two pumps exhaust or at least that's what they seem to be. The size is quite small, it's estimated to be 11.5 meters in length with a wingspan of 6.7 meters. Guys and metric get used to it. And the Chinese presented it as a reconnaissance aircraft. High supersonic reconnaissance aircrafts are, well, Nothing new. The SR-71 is still present in everyone's memory and Lockheed Martin is working on the SR-72, or at least so it seems. Built today, it's not sophisticated technology, particularly if you're using rocket engines. Provided that the vehicle is designed to be intrinsically stable, even guidance is not really a problem today. The WZ-8 seems to have what it looks like a nice satellite antenna opening on top of the fuselage, and in the worst case, pre-programmed flight paths have been flown since the 50s. The two vehicles shown at the parade don't show any specific payload, but it is easy to imagine that installing, for example, a radar is not terribly difficult. Difficult. It will still require some clever power generation source, but still nothing too much out of the ordinary. So I sort of forgot that vehicle. But then, in December 2021, I read an article that sort of left me perplexed. In an analysis that appeared on Military Watch, the aircraft was reported to be capable of loitering, also to be hypersonic, reaching a top speed of Mach 7 which is low hypersonic, but definitely hypersonic. And that I thought it was weird. In the article, no source was mentioned for these data, so I imagine it was some intelligence officer. Well, if this is the case, I am completely wrong and what follows is irrelevant. Loitering and hypersonic, or in general high Mach number, don't go well together. The SR-71 cruising at Mach 3.2 had a turning radius of hundreds of kilometers. But I think there is another and more compelling reason to doubt the hypersonic claim. I looked for a picture of the aircraft from the top and then I measured the angle between the two leading edges. Then I halved the angle because the aircraft is obviously symmetric. The corresponding Mach number that I found was 2.85, which is fast, but not hypersonic. I assumed that the aircraft was flying at 25,000 meters, about the same as the SR-71. At that height, in standard atmosphere, the speed of sound is 
299 meters per second in old money 1660 knots which is very fast but not hypersonic and slower than some western air-to-air -air or surface-to-air missiles the wz8 would be a very difficult target but not 100 impossible why i say so well in front of everybody traveling at supersonic speed there is a cone which is called the Mach cone formed by a conical shock wave and the shock wave is just a surface where the airflow slows abruptly releasing quite a lot of heat the inclination of the shock wave is the Mach angle we discussed all of this in the hypersonic series so as usual links above and below as the aircraft progressively accelerates the Mach cone gets narrower the angle decreases at some point the shock waves will touch the aircraft leading edge and for the wz-8 this should happen around mach 2.85 now what happens if the aircraft accelerates well the parts that now fall outside of the main shock wave will start generating their own shocks but what's most important is that the main shock wave is going to interfere with the wings but also the control surfaces are blanketed by the shock waves and this could potentially create some nasty consequences so it's not an ideal condition and you would rather avoid but in the past there have been several designs that flew exactly in these conditions for example the b58 was one of those so with an adequate aerodynamic design there is no reason why the aircraft couldn't fly faster save for a problem at nearly hypersonic speed shocks interfering with the aircraft structure tend to do stuff like this these are pictures of the famous experimental aircraft x-15 and these are the effects of secondary shocks interfering with the structure the heat released by the flow going through the shock transition is such that it can easily devastate a structure which is not adequately shielded with materials like steel or titanium and even with those it's well complicated and by the way the top speed reached by the x15 was mach 6.74 which is exactly in the bracket that has been reported for the wz-8 from the pictures the aircraft doesn't seem to have any protections save a small shiny metallic nose it could be faster than mach 2.85 and probably is but i would really be surprised if it was faster than mach 3.5 give or take but there is another detail that doesn't seem aligned with the hypersonic speeds look at the vertical surfaces they seem to have a pretty ordinary aerodynamic profile in hypersonic missiles or aircraft those surfaces tend to be triangular in section or sort of very elongated lozenges the reason is well complicated and it is explained in some details in the hypersonic series in any case these vertical surfaces don't seem adequate to hypersonic flight maybe the hypersonic speed has been really observed and there are factors at play that i don't know but if it's not the case then i really don't understand what an airplane like this is for the common interpretation goes like this since reconnaissance satellites are quite vulnerable and there are a few countries that actually have either hard or soft kill capabilities against them then a high speed rocket powered drone could execute some sprints above an area that you want to attack acquire the information and then glide back to the base and obviously reconnaissance is the fundamental part of every kill chain and for china we can imagine that it is extremely important for them to build a kill chain for their anti-ship ballistic missiles but now you can see a problem coming rocket engines have a very short burn time they have high specific impulse they can push you very fast but their trust won't last long if we accept that the aircraft can effectively fly at Mach 2.85 and we hypothesize a burn time of 10 minutes which is very generous the numbers that we get are not very encouraging the aircraft is air launched by an H6 bomber and the bomber will likely won't be capable to go 
too far out at sea if the airspace is somewhat contested. Then, once released, the WZ-8 is probably capable of flying a stint of about 500 kilometers at Mach 2.85, ignoring the acceleration time, for sake of simplicity. This means, for example, that it could go across Taiwan and come back. This means that it could start from nearby Hainan, fly above the South China Sea and land in one of those artificial islands that China has built in the area, or nothing else could reach the southern part of Japan, but in that case the aircraft would likely be lost because the gliding range is not enough to come back. And just for the numbers, a delta wing like that should have a glide ratio around 8 to 10, and flying at 25,000 meters, this means a gliding range of about 250 kilometers at best. True, at that speed and that altitude it is definitely not an easy target, and the horizon is a whopping 560 kilometers. But that would be hardly usable if the payload was some sort of optical device or even a radar. In fact, there is just not enough space for any really powerful optical reconnaissance device or even for a powerful radar. For a radar, yes. For some cameras, yes. Powerful ones, well, probably no. And in an aircraft with rocket motors, there's always the problem of power generation. However, it could make more sense if it was equipped with some passive electronic surveillance systems. That would require way less power, and the range would depend probably more from the emissions being received. Moreover, if this is expected to replace satellites in all those cases where the satellites have been disabled, we should also expect that also the communication satellites are not going to be available. So the antenna visible at the top of the fuselage won't work. The only way of recovering the information was landing the aircraft back to the base, but then in that case you can't do any mission where the aircraft is lost. So no long-range missions. If I am right, the WZ-8 is not really a useful platform to identify carrier group in the middle of the Pacific and pass the targeting to the anti-ship ballistic missiles. If my calculations are correct, we are left with just one possibility. The aircraft that we have seen are still experimental. And honestly, if you consider that they don't have any visible payload, well, this is probably not impossible. And probably the Chinese calling it a reconnaissance aircraft, they have just embellished the picture. A rocket-propelled drone like this should be probably bigger to increase the engine burn time, it should show some sign of a payload, and it also shouldn't be that difficult to introduce some stealth features to reduce the RCS. So it is well possible that the Chinese are developing a rocket-propelled reconnaissance drone, but if I'm right, it seems that they are not there yet. And that was it. I had fun with the calculations, I felt very satisfied, and all was well. But something kept going round in circles on the back of my head. When I made the video about the Chinese drones, I was reminded obviously of the aircraft, but I didn't give it much consideration. Then, by pure chance, I watched a video on YouTube. And then I understood what the Chinese are doing with this drone. The WZ-8 is a decoy. It is an aeroballistic system designed to fly in the high atmosphere, nearly in space, but in a suborbital trajectory. And it is not stealth and it is conspicuous on radars so that it can't be ignored by a battle group. Consider this scenario. Take a group of WZ-8 and launch them in the generic direction of a carrier group or any other battle group. They will come at a very high altitude and in this case, since the atmosphere will be thin, they will be hypersonic. They will show up prominently in radars or infrared sensors and probably the battle group will be forced to turn on the sensors to try to identify the threat. And then, with a payload of passive sensors, they could geolocate the group and relay the position back, not to satellites, 
but toward the ballistic missiles flying behind and above them. I know, it's a complicated scheme of operations, but time on target wasn't really invented yesterday. The aircraft features an undercarriage because in training you don't want to throw away a drone every time, plus in this way it can also act as a reconnaissance asset where the range is appropriate. And speaking of range, if it is not flying atmospheric, but is flying a suborbital trajectory, then the range will be much more than 500 kilometers, maybe two, three times even more potentially. And that would probably be enough to reach quite deep into the Pacific. Well, maybe you don't even have to throw all of them away because maybe some of them could land on the Salomon Islands. This theory, though, has a weak point, and that's the reason why many analysts think that the aircraft is for atmospheric flight. There seems to be no way of controlling the aircraft outside of the atmosphere. There are no maneuver thrusters, and the nozzles are not gimbaled. Well, what about reaction wheels? The Chinese know this technology very well, it's totally mainstream technology for satellites. At the end of the day, the aircraft doesn't need a lot of authority. The one thing that it needs to do is just keeping the orientation in space. It doesn't really need to maneuver. As long as the attitude while entering the lower atmosphere is correct so that the aerodynamic control surfaces can pick up the job, then that's all is needed. And there you have it. This is my interpretation. And maybe this video is completely wrong, it's just a pile of rubbish. But what do you think? Well, let me know in the comments below, they are open to everyone. Thank you for being here at this point of the video. And a particular thank you to all those who are supporting the channel on Patreon by being a member or giving one-off donations on PayPal. You can also support the channel by buying a model from Air Models. There is an affiliate link below. I have a small percentage to no extra cost to you. This video touched a lot of subjects, particularly the hypersonics, and we have an entire series about the hypersonics that is going to appear beside me with other videos that could be interesting for you. In the meanwhile, thank you very, very, very much for watching and see you there.